In Collective Action Federalism, a general theory of Article I, Section 8, Robert Cooter and I attempt to provide a firm foundation for the American federal system established in part by Article I, Section 8 of the U.S. Constitution. We call our theory Collective Action Federalism because we find that the presence or absence of interstate collective action problems provides the key to understanding the scope of federal power granted to Congress in Section 8. Our approach distinguishes problems that cause collective action problems for the states from those that do not. Not only is our approach well grounded in constitutional text, history, structure, and precedent, but it also makes sense from a prudential perspective because it flows directly from the relative advantages of the federal government and the states. Much of what the federal government does better than the states is solve collective action problems that the states are not well situated to deal with effectively on their own. If one looks at the text of Article I, Section 8, its 18 clauses, one observes that they mostly concern collective action problems caused by interstate externalities and national markets. Common examples, well-known examples, include raising revenue to fund the federal government, spending federal dollars in pursuit of the general welfare, regulating interstate commerce in a variety of ways, including by preventing races to the bottom among the several states, and ensuring open interstate markets and the free movement of labor, capital, goods, and services throughout the country. According to the theory of collective action and federalism, both the expanse and the limits of federal power in Article I, Section 8 turn on the distinction between individual and collective action by the states. We believe that this distinction between individual and collective action makes more sense from a federalism perspective than the variety of formal distinctions that have been articulated throughout American history in order to attempt to limit federal power, including in the current litigation over the Affordable Care Act, in which those who challenge the constitutionality of the so-called individual mandate argue that it's unconstitutional, it's beyond the scope of the commerce power because it regulates inactivity. But this newly minted distinction between inactivity and activity, like other formal distinctions, is arbitrary from a federalism perspective in this critical sense. It doesn't speak to the basic question of why we have a federal government to begin with. It doesn't answer the question of what the federal governments can accomplish better than the states can accomplish by acting on their own. The theory of collective action federalism is designed in part to address just those questions, or so I am arguing in present work in which I apply the theory to the constitutional debate over health care reform. Mm -hmm.